I'm not sure if y'all were excited about this upcoming season for LeBrick, but I definitely am. This was going to be a make or break moment for him as he was going to be put to the test his first year in college. Currently standing at six foot five with no growth spurt in sight, Brick was looking to put on some more strength in the gym and find a way to become more athletic than he already was. Of course, Texas Southern wanted to help out any way they could, so with the help of the dietitian, he was able to hit his calorie intake along with his macros to ensure he was in ideal shape for the season. Season. Let's fast forward and it's time for LeBrick to grace the court and show us what type of work he had been putting in the gym and let me tell you he came out swinging. Season opener and debut game for LeBrick against Alabama State, a team that heavily recruited him, and he's coming out showing that crazy James family vert as he shuts down State's opening drive with a crazy block. Then we see Brick get into the rim, hanging off, letting State know they fumbled a bad, not locking him in. Another block, and it was looking as if Brick was trying to be the defensive player of the year. But that weight room really came into play as he backs down his defender and puts that man in the rim. Like, damn, bro, this was just the first game of the year. I guess he was trying to set the tone for what he was on this season. But I guess we can't stay high forever as Brick comes down the court bullying as usual. This time, the Alabama State player pushes back. And according to Brick, he heard something crack and he went down to the floor. There's no way this is happening so soon. But an injury right now just sets back everything he had worked so hard for in the offseason. The only thing we could do now is get some x-rays and see what the doctor had to say. It's never a good time when the season just starts and you're already at the hospital getting x-rays. Luckily for Brick, this visit was going to be short and sweet. The team doctor informed him and the team that it was only a wrist sprain, and with some patience and ice, he should be back within one to two weeks. Now, one to two weeks is a long time, especially when the season just started, but we all know it could have been a lot worse. Thankful, the Brick headed back to his dorm, happy to know that it was only a minor setback for a major comeback. And bro, did he ever come back? Starting this game against Jackson State the same way he did in the season opener with a crazy block. Not only that, my guy turned and looked at the bench, letting him know he was back. And it only got worse for Jackson State as LeBrick finds himself hammering down a lob, bodying a Jackson State player who went from unknown to being on ESPN top 10 highlights that night. Britt would continue his dominance down low, drop-stepping defenders who needed to get their bodies up. Then caught the same goofy lacking as he bodied him again on a nasty lob that got the few fans in attendance out their seats. If folks weren't tuned in to what Britt was doing out there, they soon would be as he grabs a board and throws down a nasty flat-footed putback, letting his team know that he was the wrong one to mess with. Now, I don't know what came over Brick, but he was looking like a different animal. The focus was insane. The footwork was crazy as well as he makes defenders look foolish under the rim, trying to control him. He was getting busy on the boards, racking up his first collegiate double-double, and the putbacks were making him look like a small shack out there. The work he had been putting in during the offseason was finally shown fully as he leads Texas to a win, grabbing 16 boards and scoring 16 points. What a way to officially start his career. And like I said, the bodies he caught tonight definitely got people's attention. And as long as he stayed consistent, the attention would as well. Now, as we get deeper into the season, we start to see teams prepare for Brick and try to adjust to those adjustments. The first team that tried adjusting got their seven foot center body on the opening play. That team was none other than Mississippi Valley and the pick and roll was starting to look real effective against them. Now this team was playing super physical, but Brick was all for it. As we can see him hustling to grab boards, dunking on multiple defenders, really making things look dumb easy for himself as he laughs when the opposing teams need timeouts to readjust. But no matter how many timeouts were called, the pick and roll game was killing this Mississippi team. And Britt was just getting started as he continuously found himself hanging on the rim for more and more dunks. A crazy sight as a defender bit on a pump fake, knowing damn well he doesn't shoot that as Britt walks in for an easy slam. Britt was really doing whatever he wanted, when he wanted, to who he wanted, how he wanted in that paint. The footwork was still shining through as he continued to take it to much taller players. Unfortunately, no matter how hard he played and how many players he embarrassed, the team went out taking an L. Brick scored his first ever 20 point game and cleaned up with 11 boards. Still a tough L to take, especially putting up numbers like that. Now I will say that Brick did continue to put up numbers like that and kept that same level of play all the way until the end of the regular season 
which landed the team in the SWAC tournament finals for the title. Not only that, but Brick was crowned with some honors, first being named the SWAC Men's Basketball Player of the Year and the SWAC Conference Defensive Player of the Year, averaging 11 points, nine boards, one assist, one steal, and one block per game. Low numbers for sure, but you just had to be there to see it. Now, this SWAC championship game was against Alabama A&M, who were no slouches this year, and Texas Southern were the highly rated favorites for a reason, and that was only due to LeBrick slaughtering this conference time and time again. At this point in Brick's career, y'all know if he doesn't win the jump ball, that opening play is going to get shut down immediately, and that's how the tone was set for this championship game. Snatch block to start the game, and it kept going from there. The experience that Brick had gained from playing this year was on display as he continuously showed that he could finish over much taller players effortlessly at that. Grabbing rebounds was no problem for him with his wide frame. His strength was unmatched, and everyone was trying to figure out different ways to stop him but he always seemed to come back with a different way to score and get rebounds. It was almost as if he was performing magic out there on the court because no matter what the other team did, he always ended up having his way. Needless to say, this was Brick's year in the SWAT and I'm not sure if there was a better player than him in that conference and everything he earned that season, he deserved. Brick led Texas Southern to a big victory that night and this was a great way to end off the season as SWAC champions. Luckily, that's not where Brick's first year in college ends. For winning their conference, Texas Southern was headed to March Madness. Now, this level of play was something he hadn't seen too often. Of course, Texas Southern played some heavy hitters during the regular season, but this was totally different. This was going to take a different level of focus and dedication from Brick and the team, especially when it was announced that Texas Southern would be facing Purdue in the first round of March Madness. The shock that went through everybody's body when they heard the news was crazy. There was no way a SWAC team would have to face off against one of the top schools in the country first round. It is what it is when it came to Brick. He was still locked in and was ready to take on the world. Only problem is there were nine other players out on the court with him and he could only affect the game so much. Now the good news is there were going to be a lot of eyes on this game and if Brick went out there and performed the way he had done the entire season, there could be talks of going pro. Granted, he wasn't really thinking too much about it, but it was definitely possible as we've seen it happen with a lot of today's superstars. His mama was definitely blowing up his phone and so was the rest of the family once they heard who the team was facing. And they were all giving him love, but it was time to show and prove. And like I said, it was really no bad side to this game for Brick. He personally just wanted to win real bad. Yes, sir. The boys getting off the bus chat. It's time for March Madness. Oh, my goodness. Big Brick. All right, my boy. I see you. Wave at the fans. Let them know. Oh, my gosh. And we might not recognize who these boys is, but in this next clip, that big, tall Asian man right there is none other than Zach Eady and the Purdue Boilermakers. Here we go, Brick. You got a tough one today. Chat, they better get real limber out here because, Lord. Zach, if you don't know who Zach Eady is, the man is seven foot four. Let's just say that. <laughs> Brick ain't seen nothing like this. This is really about to be David versus Goliath, chat. Oh, and it's the key matchup. Lord Jesus, somebody help him. But either way, you got to sing it for the one time. Jump ball, get it, get it. Jump ball, get it. Oh, Lord. Let's go and get into it, man. This Purdue team is stacked. They already starting off pulling it. Okay. All right, on a fast break like that. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, Texas Southern. We got to get into this game. We got to turn up a little bit. Oh, my goodness. The switch up. Getting his own board. Mr. Cleanup Man over Zach Eady. I like that. We starting to see this work come through. That offseason, the regular season. My boy got a lot of experience. I don't know what to tell you. Right here is Zach. Oh, my goodness. But give me that block. They just throwing us around like rag dolls. Chad, I don't <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Oh my goodness, wide open for the three, miss. What a bore, way to come in because we was not grabbing that. But on a fast break, you see the speed difference and this is what I'm talking about. That athleticism, you love to see it, that pick and roll game. Time and time again, wait a minute, throw it down. He too little. <laughs> Hell he talking about, what he doing under that realm? I like it. Pick and roll again, this time against Zach Eady, and he's just too slow. He's not agile enough. He couldn't turn around quick enough. By the time he turned around, Brick was in the earth. And look at Zach coming right back. Oh, my goodness. Great defense, though. I like that. Get the board, pass it up. Ten points, five boards. And wait a minute. On the fast break again, Zach Eady can't chase him down. And that's what you love to see. 
great contest. Luckily, it was a long board. And look at Brick already out on transition. But look at the score, mind you. <laughs> it's 43 to 60. Brick pick up the ball. Like, let me just take over the game since you can't keep control of the ball. Personal victories right here, chat. That's all we looking for. Is that ED tough shot over Brick with take? How we do that? Drop step. Okay. I like to see it. Mismatch, mismatch. Yeah, that's me. Right here, box out. Teammate luckily grabs the rebound. We ain't got to do everything. And then just outrunning Zach Eady again is so unfair. I don't know, man. If Brick decides to go pro, I don't know how fast he's going to be against pro players. You know what I'm saying? We definitely got to take that into account. And right now, I'm just showing you guys a plethora of LeBrick James offense under that rim. He's got 24 points, seven boards, pump fake, got him out of his panty draws. And he's doing whatever he wants in that post, especially when this guy is not in the game. <laughs> like, we can't stop him. We don't want to follow him. You know what I'm saying? He's pretty efficient from the free throw line. This is all he can do. And luckily, we ain't going to see too many seven foot four. Well, damn, I forgot about Wimby. Oh, Lord. We might have a problem with Wimby. That's going to be one to watch right there, grabbing his 10th board. And again, just running down the court, doing what he wants. But unfortunately, Purdue is just too strong for Texas Southern. And chat, this is where March Madness ends for LeBrick and Texas Southern. Purdue, congratulations, whatever, blah, 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 sportsmanship, all that bulls. But guys, you guys let me know down in the comment section, man. What do y'all think is next for LeBrick? What do y'all want to see happen? And we're going to let the story play out just like that. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video, man. If you did, make sure you guys leave it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on post notifications. If you are new to the channel and you want to see some more NBA 2K content just like this, and I got you guys. But until the next one, man, peace. There can be exceptions made. Bayou decided to speak with Raiden first and try to figure out what happened from Raiden's point of view. Then he got a flight and tapped in with Ray. I think the hardest part for Bayou was to realize that while they were 18, they had to figure this out on their own with a little bit of guidance. He wasn't going to be able to force the two to speak to each other. All he could do was